the uh, energy you want from heaven. I love energy. I'm all about energy drinks. I'm drinking energy, vitamin waters and stuff, and I'm big on energy because I love being energetic. I love being energetic. Yeah. Then I see just heaven, just heaven opening up and the artist coming down, painting a perfect picture of the reality of our faith. We're swimming in swimming pools. I love swimming pools. And I just, the Lord told me I'm sending an angel of peace to you. When I was at my job, and he wasn't lying because I can feel this supernatural peace. Like, not just the normal peace I get and ha ha ha. I feel like this divine, supernatural peace within. And I feel like just... And the more I talk about it, the more I call upon it, the more it shows up. And the greater it manifests. So this angel of peace, I just feel peace. I feel like a bubble of warmth and peace and just like a blanket of God coming down and just wrapping me in his warmth, his peace. And protecting me from being hurt. Because God loves me. He don't want me to be hurt. And you know, people will hurt you. Your wife will hurt you, your kid. But God, he ain't going to hurt you in the way human beings hurt you. He protects you. And you know, I have to live my life. We always live our life like this. I got to have more money. Hold on to my money. Hold on to my money. I can only eat that much. I bought a whole bunch of apples. I only need to eat one a day because I'm going to waste it. And if I can just say to you that if you were to change your mindset, live your life giving up your bank. My bank account was at a negative $2 a day. I had to go to the bank earlier and deposit $60 because I've been pouring out my bank account. And somehow I have less money, but more food, more love, more wealth, more fuel in my more fuel. My gas tank is is at full, but my bank is on empty. But um, um, so I got sixty dollars. Somebody gave me a twenty dollar tip. Somebody gave me forty more dollars out of nowhere. So somehow I'm giving up my money, but I'm getting more in every area of my life. I'm getting I'm getting. I can keep going on and on. And then when I stop thinking, oh, I can't drink all these. I can only drink one energy drink a day. When I stop doing oh, and, and this, I feel good. Now my life is like, I can drink as many as I want. There's no, there's no, there's no lack in the kingdom of God. See, in earth we live like there's a lack, but if you're living kingdom mindset, there's no such thing as lack in Jesus. And so until we program our minds, see, I'm telling you, we live in a supernatural world. If you give your money, God will bring you money. If you want more money and you learn how to give, because the Bible says, oh, for the Holy Ghost. All right, we're getting somewhere now because now I'm feeling the Holy Spirit. Now we're getting somewhere. I'm not happy until I get deep. See, you might get happy at a surface level, but I'm not happy at a certain, hallelujah, speaking in tongues. I'm not happy. Like normal church, even powerful church services don't really please me anymore. If I don't get in the depths of God, I'm not happy. But the thing is, the Holy Spirit has taught me how to get in that depths. And that's just by coming here and talking. Because 30 minutes talking about God Guess what? Guess guess what that's producing spiritually. Guess what that's do. Okay, now we get some. Now I feel like I, now I feel like the Holy Spirit is amplifying me into the power, into the residence, into the resignation. So now, okay, okay, okay. Look now, now I, I see like electricity coming up right now out of my body. So 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 so. Yeah, man. I'm excited. I really want to go somewhere today. Jesus, I know you're not going to disappoint me. I'm expecting you to rain your power. I, need, I want you to bring more money in all of our life. I want you to bring more pleasure in all of our life. I want you to show up your glory tonight. I want you to bring us new revelation. I want you to increase our visitation. I want you to increase our ability to love you. I want you to increase our peace. I want you to release more angels of peace, prosperity. I want you to show us mighty things. He is swift as the waters. Their portion is cursed in the earth. They do not turn towards the way of the vineyards. It's vineyards, Matthew, not vineyards. Well, I like saying vineyards. 
Drought and heat consume the snow waters. So the grave consumes those who have sinned. The womb will forget him. The worm, what is it at? The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. You support my lot. My, the lot of my bank account, you support it. I don't have to earn it. You support it. You supply it. I ask you to increase your support and supply to these accounts, to this channel, to my virtue, to my abilities, to my habitation. You know what I love about my job? I talk nonstop eight hours a day, 100 miles an hour. So I don't just talk, hi, my name, I'm talking at the speed of light, fast. You know what that has done to my communication ability powers? You know what that has done to my ability to communicate, interview, talk with people, deal with all kinds of different backgrounds, all religions? It has, it has given me incredible experience. Hallelujah. Yeah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You have examined my heart. You have visited me in the night. So that means you got to visit me right now in the night, Lord. You have tried me and found nothing. I have purpose that my mouth will not transgress. Turn that down. We're about to get loud up in here. From this point forward, when we used to get um, lower, we're going to get louder. In life, when we used to get lower, we're going to be more expanded into the volume and into the tune of God. From this moment forward, and whatever, and listen, whatever I say, God makes it happen. Whenever I go to my job and my family, wherever I go, whatever I speak, it happens. It manifests. You know what I'm talking about? Whatever comes out your mouth, God going to back you up. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with the salvation. Let the godly ones be joyful in glory. Let them sing for joy on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouths. Okay. Jesus. All right, now let's transition into a spiritual warfare paradigm. You know, paramount, dime like the coin, the paraphrase of the vocalization of the Almighty God exposing every spectrum of the devil that's trying to infiltrate through an influence. So the sword of Jesus is cutting off every influence of Satan out of my life. Okay? Because the devil's a punk and he's a mark. You ever wondered why the mark of the beast? He's a mark. Okay? But the Holy Spirit, the blood of Jesus, blots out all them satanic imprints inside of you. You know what I'm talking about? The blood of Jesus is like it washes your spiritual clothing. The blood of Jesus washes our family right now. The blood of Jesus purifies our consciousness right now. The blood of Jesus purifies our destiny right now. Yeah. Yeah. Lord. I ask you in my room there's a greater calmness whenever you make an action 
a step towards improvement in your life. God honors and respects that and he will release something according to the action you took. God tests us a lot, doesn't he? Like the Lord will test you. He'll test my mind. He'll test my spirit. He'll test my ideas. He'll test my life. But the Lord, the more that I learn how to appreciate and value the process of him testing me, and I know that it's, it's uncovering the hidden depths of my intentions and it's flooding me out with his power and it's increasing my endurance and my adaptability in the spirit and it's training me how to become more men mentally stronger and how to absorb and handle much more pressure and apply greater levels of wisdom to it. Because if this is the first story, I need first story wisdom. If this is the second story, I need second story wisdom. If this is the third story, I need third story wisdom. And I need the wisdom to how to put the elevator and the staircase that's going to surround or allow people to get to the top. Because if I build the top, but I don't build no elevator or staircase, people are going to have to climb there and fall. But if I build a mansion and then I build a simplified device to get people from the bottom to the top, I can elevate them. And I do that by my words, by the way I handle situations. I got to learn not to freak out when situations come, but to be calm and smile and laugh because that changes the behavior of the observer. So when someone else is observing me, um, you know, be like Jesus, they witness the account and the benefit that I get. See, when I go to my job every day and I spend time with God like Moses on the mountain and I'm shining, well, people recognize that. It's undeniable to them. And so I tell them I was spending time with God. I was reading my Bible. I do this. And then I talk about their life and what I see in their life. And I tell them, hey, you should do this. Hey, you look like you'd be a good barber. And then, you know what I'm saying? I develop a brotherly adoration for them. And each individual, the more I chase loving them, despite how mean and evil they are to me, I'm exercising my love muscles. And my my love muscles become so swollen and strong that they can flex against hatred. A lot of times somebody's mean to you and you don't want to talk to them no more. But when you have strong love muscles, it makes you want to embrace them more. When someone, when your girlfriend or someone cheats on you, and this is a higher dimension of love that I've reached in the spirit, you reach in the spirit, you know, your girlfriend could cheat on you and it doesn't even really phase you or affect you. It actually makes your love grow for her. That's a supernatural power through exercising your muscles. Before you could only handle five weight, five, a five pound weight of people putting pressure on you. Now you can handle a 700 weight pound weight of the pressure. So that means you're ready for that higher weight of glory, that higher weight of responsibility, that higher weight of power. And this is the this is the good thing. That means you're going to get paid accordingly. You know how you do, you, you're a manager at your job, you work harder than everybody, but they pay you a lot more money? Well, it's the same way with God, okay? And we have higher increase in the Lord and he's paying us good. He's paying us our man. He's paying us our salary. You know, you get paid for praying. When you make it your job to pray, you get paid for it. You get a salary for it. God will give you a contract and you say, you know, you say, Lord, I want to be a prayer warrior. I want you to pay me. I want to work for you. I want your money. God will honor that. I learned the power of making a conscience decision. And this is some real deep, deep material. But let's dive in it in Jesus' name. There's this guy I'm watching. I love it. His name's David Wilcock. This brother here, he's, his wisdom is just insane. He'll give you science. He'll give you science. He'll give you archaeology. He'll give you the Bible. He'll give you all spiritual traditions, and he'll unify it. Like, he'll give you all the timeline of the history of Stonehenge and all these spiritual monuments. He'll give you everything and he'll unify it. And, and it's it's so brilliant. I'm in, I'm in love with him. I'm in love with the brother's spirit. And I'm trying to find a way. How can I give him money or so into his account? I don't know. Maybe I need to find his internet because this brother here is amazing. I love watching him on Gaia. Um, and... Uh,
So, I feel good. You know, you feel good because that goodness you feel is Godness. That goodness you feel is the presence of God. I feel like this warmth is coming in. This soothing presence of the Lord is just coming in. This, this material manifestation is coming upon us. Houses, lands, locations, new jobs. And uh, that should excite us. But we should move off that excitement and sow even more. You know how the door can close? Noah's Ark can close. And while it's closing, you can still run into it. Well, I believe when there's an opportunity, an open window, we step away from our perseverance. Because at the final moment of breakthrough, you'll experience the most pressure. We stop, so you should be sowing mowing. You should be sowing mow, mow, mow in that pressure. You should be um, worshiping God mow in that pressure. You should be giving finances mo in that pressure. You should be making mo videos in that pressure. You should be saying hallelujah mo in that pressure. And that's why some people break into the covenant and some people don't. That's how you would say it. So this was round one. Now we're transitioning to round two.